Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Today is Wednesday, November 24th, 2021, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, folks. Uh, off the top of my head, I do know that this week is the um, American Thanksgiving holiday week. Uh, I believe it goes into the weekend. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to my American friends. I don't know if the holiday starts today or tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure on that. I believe that, you know, you got people all across the country in America taking time off. In some cases, I hear, you know, people are taking a full week off if they've been given uh, such opportunity. But again, see, even me saying, uh, me, even me having to say being given such an opportunity to hope that, you know, one's employer would give extra time, even that in, in and of itself, not to sound depressing right off the bat, but even that in and of itself just, you know, shows us, uh, not just myself, but even you guys who are listening and watching, you know, the the, the system that, that we're all sort of struck, uh, stuck in, unfortunately, in in some cases, right? So anyways, let's, uh, let's jump right into it. So we're going to have to unfortunately cover some COVID stuff, but again, there is news from all over the world. So first and foremost, the uh, France Prime Minister, Minister Jean Castex, or Castex, I'm not sure. There's a, a C A S T E X is how you um, is how his last name is spelled. Not sure how to pronounce it. Who received two doses of the vaccine has tested positive for COVID. Again, this is according to Le Monde. I believe that's a very uh, quite um, a popular publishing outlet there. If I'm not mistaken, it is considered to be mainstream media relative to the French people. I could be wrong, but I, that's what I've been told. Again, um, the next thing is that Biden's energy secretary on rising gas prices, and I quote, we're working through an energy transition. The reality is we have to take some time to get off of oil and gas. We recognize this. This is a transition. And quote, she says this. Okay, now she then is is coming. She then goes up Biden's energy secretary shortly after Jen Psaki at the the um the briefing room in the White House, and then she's asked what what the crude what the um uh how much oil the United States uses per day. She doesn't know. She she doesn't know. She's like, I don't have the number in front of me. You are the energy secretary, and you don't know. Now, for those that might be thinking, Dave, you skipped over, you know, the prime minister of France getting COVID, uh, even though he's been fully vaxxed. I, I didn't really skip over it. Just take that as you will. Right. I'm, I'm going to I'm not going to waste your guys time rambling on, on stuff. You guys already know where I stand with. Um, the next thing is that the United States is set to release up to 50 million barrels of oil from its strategic petroleum reserve, according to the White House. Again. Whether you want to see this as a slow collapse of the economy on a global scale, of certain major factions, of, of different nations, if you will, relative to the transnational elite, or if you actually think that this may be a legitimate transition, or a bit of both, or neither, we have, to, we, we have no choice but to speculate because of how much they lie. It, it's, it's so true. It's so true. I mean, for example, Biden gets off of the helicopter or the, uh, from uh, his colonoscopy a couple days back and then is asked about the Rittenhouse uh, ruling. And then he says, I agree with the judge. He walks inside the White House about an hour later. He puts out a statement completely contradicting that. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what's going on. He can't even know. I'm not even kidding. Like before, this used to be said as a joke, but now it's not. He can't even tie his own shoes. I mean, there's pictures of Biden walking in through the oval, uh, through the, uh, the, the the rose garden there, and his foot is completely missing like it's been edited out. The White House officially posted that on in their Instagram, and then they removed it. It's ridiculous. I mean, we don't know what's real or what's fake anymore, and that's why I say we got to speculate so much. The uh, next is that Pelosi's January 6th select committee has subpoenaed Roger Stone, Alex Jones, Taylor Budowich, Dustin Stockton, and Jennifer Lawrence. Now, to clarify, I did some background digging very quickly. It is not the Jennifer Lawrence that is the actress. I thought myself to him, like, what the hell does she have to do with this? Because, um, again, she's right in there with the elites and all that. So I'm like, what? She wants to involve herself in this crap for what? Um, so it turns out it's not the actress. It is another avid supporter of Trump's uh, by the same name. Um the uh, January 6th Select Committee also subpoenaed leaders of the Proud Boys and the Oath Keeper. Again, I don't know how much of this is legitimate or and how much of this is literal like tit-for-tat strategy because we now have on the other end of things, we have the Durham probe. John Durham, I believe, right? Who's arrested Igor Dushenko, if that's his uh, name. Uh, please forgive me if it's not, but I believe it is, uh, pertaining to the Steele dossier that is now showing financial records and evidence and paperwork that the Clinton campaign paid Mr. Dushenko to falsely lie to the FBI in order for the Steele dossier to be created, to propagandize that, and to sort of try and do, for the Clinton campaign to do their best to suppress the Trump campaign. So again, they all play dirty tricks, both sides. Let's be totally honest with ourselves, folks. Again, who suffers? Who... Uh, the average everyday person. Why in this case do, does the average everyday person suffer? Because they were forced to choose between two people that, again, we may have to think there were more idealistic um, perspectives from politically, right? Whether it was 2016, 2020. We now have Biden saying he's going to run again. He's saying he's going to run in 2024. And if Trump runs, it's just going to be a repeat. And I'm pretty damn sure Trump is going to win without a shadow of a doubt. 
um, unless there's some rigging. But I got to be careful with that because of YouTube, obviously. Uh, the uh, next thing is that the Thomas Jefferson statue has been removed from New York City Hall after 187 years. The Public Design Commission voted to banish the statue of the third U.S. president. Again, presuming that we have to understand that the wokeness has taken over and things like that. And I'm not saying that we should be complacent and just sit still. However, with that being said, if you guys want my humble opinion, I think there are much larger things to be focused on at the moment. But... Again, this is no small small thing either. I understand both sides of this perspective. So with that being said, I'd say let it go for now. I know that obviously you give them an inch, they take a mile, right? Generally speaking, when I say they, um, I'm referring to, again, the establishments, the institutions that are pushing this liberal type wokeism, if you will. And that's where I agree with Jordan Peterson, where he says it's very clear to draw a line between conservatism and the far right, but not between liberalism and the far left. Because again, we can equate in modern human history the, the um, rationalization of... Of, of, of consolidating extremities to that of World War II. But if you look, for example, at between the left, uh, the differences between the left and the far left, it's very, very difficult to draw that line, right? So again, I, I would very strongly agree with that. And we will see what happens with as it pertains to the, maybe the outcry or maybe no outcry from the Jefferson statue being removed. The next thing is that, again, I don't mean to fall into this sort of duopoly of things, because again, if we're really looking at this from a black pill perspective, as it pertains to the Rittenhouse trial, either side, it's just playing both getcha, getcha, always who's right, who's wrong, driving the ego, driving the id in order to suppress us from the real things that are occurring, in my opinion. But Kyle Rittenhouse told Tucker Carlson that Lynn Wood and John Pierce could have bailed him out of jail in September, but kept him in there until November to raise money so they could make it for their own benefit, not trying to set Kyle free. I believe that. And the reason I wanted to report this in particular is because, again, just goes to show you the depravity. Again, Lynn Wood is known to be a, a conspiracy theorist, I believe also a lawyer, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, he pocketed the money. So, when I say these elites use cheap parlor tricks, they use it against each other, too. Now, okay, Rittenhouse is not an elite per se. I mean, we could debate that uh, in terms of, like, you know, because of the publicity and what have you. Maybe he might be the next Greta Thunberg, except this time for the right. We don't know. We got we to gotta think, right? We got to use our critical thinking. But at the same time, when you see things like this, they, they, they're, they're, all, they're all screwing each other. So... The next thing is that Waukesha Christmas Parade uh, attack, a ring camera captured the moment Daryl Brooks was arrested and NBC released an edited version. Okay, so there was a Waukesha Christmas Parade attack. It, it's starting to ramp up the same type of division and, and, and uh, spec, uh, speculation as the Rittenhouse thing did, as the George Floyd thing did. So I'm not going to touch this until everything is over and that might be months or maybe years from now. Because again, you see, you see how for months I never covered the Rittenhouse situation? Because because there was all out of context uh, statements and clips and yada yada we don't know so I'm just gonna leave that there. Um, we will revisit it though. The next thing is that police plan to increase presence at retail stores amid out of control mob looting crime uh, a crime wave in San Francisco, California. Gov uh, Gover uh, Governor Newsom announces. My God, I mean it's out between the homelessness and what's going on. It's a disaster. I don't know what to say anymore at this point. Seriously. I really don't. I don't know what could be said. I don't know um, as it pertains to, you know, uh, the, the, the people voting in in that snap election in Newsom. In my opinion, folks, and it's no disrespect to anyone who lives in California because I still do believe there are certain parts of California that you are sort of away from that sort of control grid matrix or maybe more so than others. It's a beautiful place. It really, really is. And I've been many times. A beautiful, beautiful place. I got a lot of friends from over there. But, I mean, when I see what's happening, I personally don't agree with this. I don't see how this would resolve any issues. I see more of this as a stick in the in, in our eyes, as the in the eyes of the masses to just create more division and, and spark a senseless debate. The next thing is that Biden blames high gas prices on oil producing countries and large companies not ramping up production. Okay, I'm I'm gonna leave that there because there's so many things wrong with that. I'm not an economist, but you don't need, I don't think you need to be one to like realize how ridiculous that is. Uh, Biden then read text from a teleprompter, including an end of quote notice. He read the end of quote part. Like that's how out of it he is. You know when you have a teleprompter and it says okay end of quote stop speaking. He read that part. Like it's it's in brackets to deliberately tell you, and I think it's even in a different font. And for him probably they made a maybe a special color for him because he can't he can't see he can't think. Um. Anyways, he also said, Happy Thanksgiving. I'm heading to a food kitchen now. Then reporters started yelling, saying, When will you answer our question, sir? And he didn't answer. He just left. Uh, Saki, then Jen Saki, the White House press secretary, then deflected from Biden calling Rittenhouse a white supremacist and blamed Trump instead. Um, okay, again, take that as you will. Let's, there's more important things to focus on. But interest, funny to see, you know, this coming directly from the White House when if Trump had, you know, said any of this from the opposite perspective, he would have been attacked, which he was when he was in office. So... Um, the next thing is that the Biden administration will require essential 
non-resident travelers crossing U.S. land borders, such as truck drivers, to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19, according to the Washington Post. Uh... Again, this is interesting because 30, which takes me to my next point, which is that 37% of U.S. trucker drivers, quote, not only said no, but hell no, end quote, to Biden's vaccine mandate. CEO of the American Trucking Association says that's almost 40%. That's big. You got to really reconsider, man. Like, the, and when I say that, I'm talking to the White House. Like, you guys, man, like, I know this is part of a much bigger scheme. Don't get me wrong in my, at least in my, in my opinion, but holy cow uh the next thing is that the u.s department of defense has formed a new unit to examine unexplained aerial sightings aka ufos they again they're changing the acronyms that they use and the different variations of what the the letters stand for to again maybe because the stigmatization of the word ufo but we'll dump, jump into that into obviously upcoming public and members episodes so we'll we'll move on from that the next thing is that dr fauci said and i quote boosters are extremely important we believe boosters will likely give you the highest level of protection yet end quote I'm not touching that. I'm leaving that there. Again, I'm just here to report this. So, um, again, you folks know what I'm really getting at. But um, the next thing is that Nancy Pelosi reportedly entered into a contract to buy a Florida oceanfront mansion listed for $25 million on Jupiter Island. I saw a quick picture of it. It is beautiful. If I had that kind of money, I would buy it too. But, I mean, again, you're supposed to be a representative of the people, which we know she's not, obviously. But, it, yeah, I, I don't want to, you know, sound like a broken record. So, you guys know where I'm going to go with that. The next thing is that U.S. Senate Banking Committee seeks answers on the Tether stablecoin, requesting immediate information about their backings, redemption process, and activities. Here's the thing. In pure theory, I would trust the U.S. Senate Banking Committee to seek answers on Tether. I don't know if they're doing this for some type of narrative, some type of agenda, if this is part of a larger intelligence uh, covert operation in order to sort of maybe expose some money laundering of some kind. But again, who are the good guys or bad guys? When you see what the CIA has done, how they create the wars and then they end up, with, they create the problem and then they so conveniently, I say that, you know, sarcastically, create the solution. Who are the good guys anymore? So when the U.S. Banking com uh, 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 Senate Banking Committee seeks to look into this i don't know if i can trust this now to be fair i don't know if i can trust what's going on with tether either assuming there's some you know uh shady stuff going on so i don't I, either or i don't know if i'm being completely honest with you folks um if we uh, if we uh, continue moving on here, we will see that um, the U.S. weekly jobless claims has declined to the lowest level since 1969. Um, a U.S. embassy. Okay, so again, that could we can you can view data in different ways. So I'm not trying to make a fear mongering point out of that, but I think it's important to note. Um, the next thing is that the uh, right after this we will continue. Uh, we will start going on the global news. Um, the U.S. embassy in Kiev has issued security alert uh, alerts amid unusual Russian military activity near Ukraine's borders. Rem Reminding U.S. citizens that conditions along the border may change with little or no notice. Okay, I'll be honest with you, folks. This is this is where I stand with this kind of stuff, and I and I and I say this because when I honestly when I see this kind of um, I guess you could say the way in which all of this operates uh, w as it pertains to to Ukraine and other things and and that kind of stuff. Look, here's the thing. What the U.S. and the CIA is doing with Ukraine, again, the only people that suffer are the, uh, the people of the Ukraine, the innocent people. When the CIA is sticking their nose in, in Ukraine for God knows how many reasons, for, you know, the sake of democracy and yada yada, okay. It's like if Russia were to basically come and take Hawaii or try to create an incursion in Hawaii. The U.S. would not let Russia get even close geographically to its borders. From Putin's perspective... And is his administration, I could see that. Like, what are you doing? You're, you're putting anti-ballistic missiles all around Russia, or you're at least attempting to. And on top of that, too, you're trying to create an umbrella over us, and you're trying to take what once was ours for hundreds of years. Now, not defending Putin. I'm not, because we could also argue very strongly that Putin is suppressing the actual desires of the Ukrainian people. But th what I'm saying here is that I don't trust either or. Again, I hate to be that guy, but I, what can I say, folks, if I'm telling you folks the truth? Um, the next thing is that, Excuse me, let me just uh, catch up on my list here. It glitched out, so I just had to close the app and reopen it. Um, the next thing is that the WHO's Tedros says he is concerned about, quote, false sense of security that vaccines have ended the pandemic. <sighs> Again, same way data could be interpreted one way, could also be interpreted the other way as well. So it goes both ways, so to speak. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, the next thing is that Saudi Arabia and Russia are considering pausing planned oil production increase after the, after the U.S. and others release crude oil to push prices lower, according to the Wall Street Journal. It's a chess game. Tit for tat. Simple as that. Now, this is what... I didn't mean for it to rhyme, but okay. Um, the next thing is that Slovakia, excuse me, 
plans to impose a two-week lockdown for all, both vaccinated and unvaccinated alike. Uh, again, you guys know where I stand with this as well. You give them an inch, they take a mile, and it's sad to see. You know, just like what happened with Austria, I'm afraid for the rest of Europe now, truly. I mean, you see the, the protests in the millions of people. And if people are still not listening, I mean, if the governments are still not listening, then we got a problem. But again, we'll 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 deal with that in an upcoming in a later episode, members episode, the whole thing. Uh, the next thing is that in uh, Morocco and Israel signed their first ever defense agreement in uh, Rabat. Uh, a memorandum of understanding has formalized security cooperation between Morocco and Israel after the Abraham Accords. Look, uh, that's great to see, whether it's just a front or not, honestly, to see some type of alleged peaceful progress, there's hope, but that's how unfortunately shitty I have to say that this planet is, that we gotta just hope that there's peaceful progress, because we're so used to seeing, you know, someone was bombed here, someone was murdered there, again, I think we've forgotten in a lot of ways, and when I say we, I don't mean individually, I mean the masses over time, we have forgotten what it means to live on a peaceful planet. I don't mean to sound so corny, but you know. Uh, the next thing is that the Prime Minister of Sudan calls for a halt to post-coup firings and hirings. Uh, Hamdok has ordered an immediate halt to dismissals and hirings in national and local public institutions after regaining power. Again, if this is not what the people want, they will be the, the people of Sudan will be the only ones that suffer. The rest will be a chess game. Uh, the next thing is that Australia designates Hezbollah or Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. This, uh, the country is also adding the neo-Nazi white supremacist group, the base, to its list of terrorist organizations. Again, if Australia Australia's fallen and lost at this point, sadly, it's unfortunate for me to say that because I know there's quite a few of you that live in Australia. Some of you actually tell me, Dave, you know, depending where you live, it's not so, so bad. But again, I, I'm happy to see that there is still hope from the average everyday person out there. But it, it's it's unfortunate to see Australia probably being a testing ground for what may come globally, um, which is why I was so pissed off when I saw what happened with Austria. The next thing is that the world's highest child soldier numbers are in the West and Central uh, parts of Africa. More than 21,000 children recruited by government forces and armed, armed groups in conflict hit regions during past five years uh, have been, uh, again, uh, have been recruited, uh, UNICEF says. It's expected. It's expected. Uh, whether it's for labor, whether it's for, you know, being a legitimate soldier, as they've described here, it, it's expected. And again, the only people that suffer are the innocent ones, these gangs, these government rebels, these government officials, these rebels. It's all it's it's a multi it's multi-layer chess game. And it's all, again, I hate to use the term because it's been used so often in the last three, four years, especially regarding Trump, but it's it's like 5D chess. Um, I don't know what else I could say. Uh, next, France and Germany are the latest countries to urge nationals to leave Ethiopia. The Ethiopian prime minister says he is heading to the front line to lead troops against the Tigrayan forces as hopes for peaceful solution in a year-long war fade. That, I mean, I have to say, assuming the Ethiopian Prime Minister is actually doing this, that takes balls. Now, again, pr I, presuming I have everything in context here. If I don't, please forgive me, but um, I, at least it's showing that he's siding with the soldiers and the people, so to speak. Uh, it is unfortunate either way. Uh, next is that the U.S. plans to resume talks with the Taliban in Qatar, according to the, the State Department. It will be the second round of talks between the U.S. and the Taliban in Qatar since the group took over Afghanistan in August. Yeah, they don't have a choice. I, I mean, at this point, I, and this is just the surface level of things that we're being reported reported on, uh, reported to, um, that they're reporting to us, excuse me. We don't know really what's going on on the back end of things, and that's ultimately what's happening there. So I, I, I can only speculate in terms of that. Like, we don't know, did the CIA really want this to happen? Did the military-industrial complex really want this to happen? In terms of the way that, you know, the, the whole thing, in the Afghanistan withdrawal occurred. Every day, folks, things that were conspiracies that ended up coming true once every 10 years is coming true every, like, week now, it seems. So, um, the next thing is that six bodies have been found hanging in the violence-ridden Mexican state. Now, this is unfortunate to see, but the state of Zacatecas has seen an increase in violence this year as cartels jockey for control of drug smuggling routes. Again, uh, maybe the people that were hung were actually people involved in the drug trade. So to listen, I'm not saying, uh, actually, no, I am saying this. You know what you sign up for, particularly in organized crime, especially in organized crime business as intense as the cartels. If I'm being honest with you folks. Now, if they're innocent people, my God, absolutely terrible. But if they're people that were involved in the, in, the, in the drug trade, you know what you sign up for. And if you don't, then I don't know how dumb you got to be. So, you know. The next thing is that, if we see over here, the UK um, Member of Parliament Stella Creasy calls for a reform of Parliament baby ban. Opposition Labour Party legislator was reprimanded for attending um, a, a debate on Tuesday with her three-month-old son. I'm not sure if her three-month-old son was also, uh, she was breastfeeding her three-month-old son, but it's caused a ruckus. Again, the fact that these kind of stories actually get more traction around the world, at least seemingly compared to UFO stories or, you know, even paranormal things or anything like that. 
is like, holy cow, it just shows you where the masses' minds are at and how they could still be distracted, but hopefully it's less and less of that. The next thing is that Taiwan revamps their military training for uh, reserves amid Chinese pressure. Taiwan is facing questions about whether its military re reserves are capable of actually fighting in the event of a Chinese invasion. And if they're not, then send the U.S. to help them out. To basically say, like, listen, like, we're gonna let's call a stalemate here, so to speak. Again, assuming I'm I'm in full context here, but it's also been reported too that I believe Navy SEALs in some cases have been quietly and covertly training the Taiwanese forces over there. So again, um, I just hope uh, Biden doesn't ease off the gas too much. That so China, the CCP, not China, excuse me. So the CCP doesn't take Taiwan. But there's so many multi-pronged layers and apparatuses to that that it's hard to even speculate on. Um, the next thing is that New Zealand plans to stay closed to visitors until April 2022. New Zealanders and residents from most countries will be allowed. Um, quarantine free entry from february 13th and onwards so um basically uh foreign nationals and, and individuals like that I, I believe there will be exemptions because that's quite a while like if you got a family member that's away on business from last year and you haven't seen them in over a year that's tough you know that's tough um we the next, and we see, by the way, in Australia, what's happening with how families are now getting back together and stuff. And even then, that's sad because it's very limited. And that limited little bit of happiness there, again, I can't help but think of an esoteric ability to say, okay, you know, or an esoteric being saying, let these people feel some happiness so there's some hope in their in their minds and their spirits. And we continue to, you know, feed off them that way. Anyways, that's this shouldn't be part in the news episode, but. Uh, the next thing is that rumbles in Rakhine amid strains between the Myanmar military and rebels. Recent skirmishes between Arakan army and the military have raised concern about the stability of an informal year-long ceasefire. Again, it, it's human nature. Uh, you're you're going to have now, it depends if uh, what ego comes in, what strategically, if there's any angle to that. And also we have to consider the intelligence uh, uh, intelligence agencies that are covertly in there as well too so maybe the intelligence agencies the major ones that belong to you know world powers will provoke something to start a war for a distraction maybe or for other reasons who knows we have to consider all of it the next thing is that uh, Magdalena Andersson has been approved by Sweden's parliament as the country's first ever female prime minister after replacing Stefan Lof uh, Lofven as leader or Stefan Lofven as leader of the center-left social democrats um Sweden is the only Nordic country ever to have elected a woman as national leader before Great to see. And listen, I, I'm not I'm not against the congratulations of first time female positions or what have you. But however, I do believe, though, that, again, it, there should be consistency. Fantastic that it's the first time that there's a woman in there. But again, let's see the type of job that this that, that, that she does, regardless of gender, regardless of race. That's my thing. Just like with the Israeli Palestinian thing, human on human situation here. You doing a good, you know what I mean? If it just so happens that the the previous uh, uh, minister was a man, did a better job. It's not a gender thing. It's just who simply did a better job. Maybe she'll do a better job. Seriously, I'm not, I'm uh, being genuine. So, um, the next thing is that the fiance of murdered U.S. blogger Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry, took his own life. His family's lawyer has said in a statement, uh, "Mr. Laundry returned from a road trip without his fiance, and her body was later found in Wyoming. Uh, Mr. Laundry's body was identified last month using dental records. He had been the subject of a manhunt for more than a month before his body was found." Okay. Um, I'm just covering that for the sake of updating you folks. I'm not really trying to distract. I believe that is a distraction story and a, a mass consciousness redirection, if you will. But at the same time, you know, it, the family lawyer said this is what occurred. So, again, think of that as you will. The next thing is that America's largest, uh, three largest pharmacies have been found to be liable for helping fuel a painkiller crisis in two Ohio counties in a landmark case. A federal court found that actions by Walgreen Boots Alliance, CVS, and Walmart helped create an oversupply of addicted opioid pills. The scale of compensation to be paid to the two Ohio counties will be decided at a future hearing. CVS said it would appeal against the judgment. Yeah, you see, who, what's going to happen? Maybe, and if that, maybe an executive of one of these companies is going to get a house arrest for a month, and they're going to get paid out a beautiful bonus. You know, so that, that's how you know you've made it. And I'm being sarcastic there, but that's how you know you've made it amongst the elites. When you get house arrest and you get paid out a big bonus, that's when you know everyone's like, hey, good job, okay, you know. I don't know what to say at that point. Um, the next thing is that, uh, or sorry, the final thing is that Apple is suing Israeli spyware firm NSO Group and its parent company for allegedly targeting iPhone users with a hacking tool. NSO's Pegasus software can infect both iPhones and Android devices, allowing operators to extract messages, photos, and emails, record calls, and secretly activate microphones and cameras. NSO Group said its tools were made to target terrorists and criminals, but it has allegedly also been used on activists, politicians, and journalists. Okay. 
few different angles here. First off, you don't think Apple knows uh, relative to the CIA's operations and they're cooperating with the CIA on God knows how many classified programs. That's number one. I'm not saying Apple is suing for the money, but I think they're suing for the publicity because think about how it would look if Apple didn't do anything. It would actually maybe raise more questions. People would start saying over time, you know, investigative journalists, why isn't Apple, you know, you know, being outraged by this, if you will. With that being said, this could be legitimate or again, it could be actually a a preconceived manifestation of some distraction in order to deter from something else pertaining to either Apple, its classified cooperations with gov world governments, or you name it. I, I mean, again, these are the things we have to consider. It, it, nothing is what it seems anymore, and I don't think it ever was. So with that being said, thank you so very much, folks, for watching and listening, and we have... Um, Another members episode coming for the members shortly. Um, in addition to all of that, too, we, of course, the you know, we're back on track this week. Public episodes, you name it. Uh, lots and lots of things coming both publicly and for the members. So stay tuned. Thank you so very much, folks. We'll catch you all soon. Cheers.